When the French refer to their native tongue, they call it the language of Molière. Today we're celebrating four centuries of France's most illustrious playwright. One must eat to live, and not live to eat. Tous les hommes sont semblables par les paroles, et ce n'est que les actions qui les découvrent différents. Je sens de temps en temps, comme un voile devant les yeux. L'hypocrisie est un vice à la mode, et tous les vices à la mode passent pour vertu. C'est Don Juan qui m'a séduite forcément, puisque c'est Don Juan. Four hundred years after his birth, Molière remains as central to French culture as Shakespeare in the English-speaking world. The Comédie Française, which is sometimes referred to as the House of Molière, is marking the date by recreating Tartuffe, the play that outraged the Catholic Church and almost ended his career. France 24's Olivia Salazar Winspear is there for us. We're also joined by Molière expert Professor Noel Peacock from Glasgow University. Noel, why was Molière such a genius? Well, I suppose it depends what you mean by genius, but I think here you probably have three reasons that we generally accept as uh, constituting Molière's genius. You've mentioned the first, really, La langue de Molière, his manipulation of the French language, that we do refer to French now as the language of Molière, and his ability to have within the same play the diction of the peasants along with uh, the language of the Marquis, his ability to uh, bring those two together and a comic contrast is still as potent as uh, as it was when he first wrote. The second thing would be his stagecraft. He was an actor playwright. Like Shakespeare, he understood what audiences wanted. It was the litmus test. Did they laugh? If they didn't, they wouldn't come back. And thirdly, and I think this is probably the most significant, the three-dimensional characters he's left us with and uh, which have not really diminished their uh, in importance since uh, he first wrote. And these are basically constructed around duality. The fundamental traits of human nature are greatness and are misery. And Molière's characters, they have these great aspirations to go beyond themselves, as we all do. But at the same time, they recognize or brought to recognize, they don't always recognize it, brought to recognize their humanness, their humanity. Uh, they're brought down to earth because their expectations are so often disappointed. And that's what we identify with in these great uh, characters that Molière has left us with. And now let's head um, to the Comédie Française, which is known as the House of Molière. Olivia, tell us about its history with Molière. Uh, the building you can see behind me is France's theatrical headquarters and as you say it's synonymous with what Molière in part because it's thanks to him that it exists sort of because the Comédie Française was founded in 1680 by King Louis XIV who'd been so impressed 20 years earlier when he saw Molière's troupe playing that he gave them full access to the theatre of the Palais Royal that's a building behind us part of the royal complex it was abandoned at the time and he gave them the opportunity to rehearse there and stage plays there and that's where many of Molière's most successful shows uh, made their debut things like The School for Wives in 1662 and The Misanthropist in 1666. Now eventually that theatre became the Comédie Française after Molière's death but they paid homage to him on the opening night by playing some of his repertoire and today it still stages more of his work than that of any other playwright. Now of course the Comédie Française was very important in his life and in his career but it is linked to his demise as well because Molière was starring in the title role of uh, the hypochondriac, the malade imaginaire, in 1673 when he collapsed on stage. Now legend has it that he actually died on stage but the truth is perhaps not as poetic as the uh, director of the archive here at the theatre told us earlier. They say he died on stage, but he didn't. The documents attest to this. He was taken ill on stage while playing the role of Argon in The Imaginary Patient, but he died at home next door, en route to Richelieu. 
And Olivia, how are the Comédie Française celebrating Molière's 400th birthday? Well, there's a full season of Molière's greatest hits uh, that will be playing up until July. And I do say greatest hits because, as Noel pointed out, he was a very commercially successful playwright. He was no starving artist. So we'll have new versions of some of those plays I mentioned, The Hypochondriac, The Misanthropist, The Miser, The Bourgeois Gentleman and Don Juan. They're also doing a selection of hybrid performances, that is, live stage shows which will also be streamed online. They're re-releasing some of, some of the cinematic adaptations of his work as well. Now, they're opening the season here at the Comédie Française with a very significant play, one you mentioned, Eve, and that's Tartuffe, or The Hypocrite. It was first uh, performed for the king in Versailles in 1664, and apparently he loved it. He was a fan. The Catholic Church, not so much. So Molière rewrote that play, and that second version is the one we know today, the text that has been translated into countless languages. Now, for the very first time, something very close to the original version of Tartuffe is to be staged here by Belgian director Ivo van Hover. Now, it's been put together, it's been recreated uh, through the painstaking work of theatre historians. And van Hover is a bit of a theatre superstar himself. He has experience working with the actors from the Comédie Française and with Molière's work as well. So this is a very keenly anticipated theatrical first. Thank you so much, Olivia. Now, the 17th century playwright's biting comedy still for many French school children's introduction to drama. Students from the Lycée Montaigne in Paris are rehearsing for a performance with excerpts from three Molière plays, including Tartuffe. <laughs> I think that it's very accessible, because the text is not a barrier, in fact. We communicate not only with the use of the text, but also with our bodies. In Molière's theatre, the place of women is extremely important. Molière had a very strong vision of women's freedom, and he has a way of speaking about it, which is very singular, which is interesting in the context of everything that's happening in the current climate, with Me Too, for example. It was very interesting to make a parallel and to see all the modernity of Molière's fort 400 years ago, to see how much it speaks to us today. And through their adaptation of Molière, the students are trying to raise awareness about violence against women. Molière's plays are often seen as a commentary on women and their place in society, aren't they, Noel? Yes, indeed. Molière was keen to comment on such, such issues. And given the narrowness of education and the subservience to husbands uh, at the time and the restrictions on action and behaviour of, of women and their deni the denial of their rights, to choose husbands. And so you do get in this Molière's women, some of the women are very feisty indeed. And uh, this is one of the things that he is very up to date in that respect. And he's one of French theatre's founding fathers, but he also mm. made his mark internationally. There have been adaptations of Tartuffe in the UK in recent years. The Royal Shakespeare Company relocated the action to Birmingham's Muslim community. Kira Knightley played in The Misanthrope in 2009 and David Tennant in Don Juan in 2017. It shows that Molière can resonate outside of France, but Noel, that wasn't always the case, was it? Certainly not. In, um, in fact, it was the, the box-off manager's nightmare when there was going to be a Molière play up until, I would say, the 1980s. John Peter, the well-known theatre critic writing in the Sunday Times, said uh, just as much, really, that uh, it could even damage uh, our relations between us and the European Union. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure that Molière has led to the breakup of uh, the, uh, Britain and the Euro European Union, and he's not been behind Brexit. But there was a, the, the box office uh, did not show Molière's popularity at the time. 1980, though, saw a sea change with a lot of performable translations. There are about 60 uh, different translations in a, a period of 60 years on the Tartuffe and the Mise en Trope alone. It, it, it shows the, 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 the real interest in, in Molière. And I think this is largely because of the, um, what Molière, Molière is so modern. Uh, his, his comedy is not, it's not a wall, it's but a bridge. The human uh, issues that he deals with and the characters he has left us with uh, still resonate so much with those who go to sea.
So much to talk about. To celebrate the 400th anniversary since Molière's birth, there are numerous exhibitions, performances and books coming out. The Royal Opera of Versailles is putting on six months of events, including this performance of the play Georges Dandin or The Confused Husband. And there's also an exhibition at the Espace Richaud in Versailles until April that opens its doors this week, as Emerald Maxwell reports. He's France's most famous playwright, yet little is known about Molière's life and no original manuscript remains of his work. His legend has shaped and shifted in line with the times, but an exhibition in Versailles aims to lift the curtain on the myth of Molière to get as close as possible to the truth. In studying Molière's life, I found that he was a hyperactive man who had multiple callings. He was an actor, an author, a manager, the leader of a troupe, on top of being the king's upholsterer. Some say that this eventually led to his death, of exhaustion and illness. So with the exhibition curator, we wanted to express his abundant, generous character with a dense display to reflect that side of him. From reconstructed period costumes to masks by Erhard Stiefel made for the film Poquelin, the collection brings together nearly 200 works from Europe, Africa and Asia. Because Molière is not just a national treasure, he's also the most widely read, performed and translated French playwright in the world today. Interestingly, he is also an author that different cultures have reappropriated, particularly cultures that for several centuries were colonized by France, but that in the end kept Molière while purging the very Franco-French vision. It shows that this theater, which speaks of dowries, of arranged marriages, of the hold of religion on society, of the lack of sincerity in social relations, of the status of women, is in fact also a theater for our time in different parts of the world, independently of 17th century French society. During his lifetime, Molière was a star. Nowadays, he's an undisputed master of the stage. Four centuries on, his work has stood the test of time, with French even becoming the language of Molière. Well, let's go back to Olivia at the Comédie Française. Olivia, later this month, there'll be a performance of Du Rayon La Nuit. What do we know about that? Well, this is not actually one of Molière's plays. It's more of a play about Molière and specifically his collaboration with composer Jean-Baptiste Lully because together Molière and Lully developed a new sort of show, a kind of hybrid mix of dance, drama and ballet called a comédie ballet. And we do know that uh, the king at the time, Louis XIV, was a great fan of ballet, so that probably influenced their choice. They had a very successful working relationship together for about 10 years until they fell out. Now, this new play, uh, Du Rayon la Nuit, was written and staged by uh, Johan Gaziorowski of the Comédie Française. He's an actor, but this is his first time uh, staging this kind of hybrid spirit uh, performance. So it's one of a handful of contemporary pieces, which is part of this season, which try to reflect upon Molière's contribution to the arts here in France, and of course, putting that in a very modern context. Olivia, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you also to Noel Peacock for being here with us today. Our reporters have been at the rehearsals of Du Rayon La Nuit, showing from the end of January at the Comédie Française in Paris, part of the events taking place to celebrate the most read, performed and translated French writer in history, Molière. We'll leave you with that. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. These are well-rounded, grandiose shows created to please the king. So there's music, ballet, as the king loved dancing, as well as theatre. This new show aims to mix a story with music. This shows how closely connected storytelling and music really is.